Welcome, it is Miller on Sports. Uh, our first podcast, uh, giving it a go. If you've been listening to Miller on Sports since, let's see, we started September of 2010, just giving the podcast format a, a go after 1010XL. And uh, if you haven't heard my recent duties as voice of the Ospreys, uh, you can hear those games on 1010XL, our first game coming up Friday, uh, 7 p.m. against South Carolina. We'll be on the road at Columbia. So giving the podcast uh, format a, a go here, uh, invested in some equipment and just a variety of things. So we'll we'll tinker and try some things. And uh, like a number of people have asked me, what, what is the, the idea, the goal uh, behind this format? Is it, uh, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts for a while now. The Rich Eisen podcast, which I know stopped being a podcast format, went for a TV show. Uh, the Nerdist with Chris Hardwick, who uh, interviews a, a number of celebrities and TV, film, authors, that kind of stuff. And just is a lot of fun. But those are 60 minutes, 90 minutes, a little bit longer. Uh, I'm thinking at least something where once, maybe twice, maybe three three times a week where we have something 15 to 20 minutes and it's it's sports it might be more local uh jacksonville heavy as uh, a lot of people know our 1010xl 10, 10 show that we had it was uh the most jacksonville uh probably of any sports talk radio in town and i love the format the idea of that hey we could interview somebody like uh, an alan verland or any coaches in town uh, dave harrell with the city of jacksonville uh, get a variety of perspectives. Uh, Jaguars talk, which I, I know we love, even though it's uh, unfortunately the third straight year of being one and nine. But uh, a variety of options with this this podcast format, which which I really love. And if you know me, it's just I enjoy talking so much and talking about what I love and what I love. Maybe not most, but it's in my. My top three or top five is is Jacksonville, so we'll try and stick with that. Sharks, Suns, Jaguars, uh, Jacks, Giants, UNF, JU, and uh, fortunately UNF is, has given me this option of in my spare time. You know, of course, all my focus will be on the Ospreys, a basketball team, and then uh, come uh, late March, early April, and into the summer. Uh, doing men's baseball and, and hopefully they can make a run uh, much like I think men's basketball can so I, I thank Lee Moon and everybody at UNF to to give me this option of you know really talking anything in Jacksonville and I'll, I'll still go to the the press conferences whether it's the uh, Jaguars or Armada uh, I forgot to mention them but uh, we'll keep a, a variety of things open and uh, keep social media going so Miller on sports Twitter Facebook, uh, you can find us Instagram as well, and you know we've got great photos up, the blog MillerOnSports.com, and uh, just kind of keep it fun because I feel like here in Jacksonville, uh, there's this untapped potential as well. One, I like to talk. Two, I feel like there's a great opportunity to kind of get, as a few friends of mine have said, that you know you've you've built so much in this short amount of time, but also oddly created like a cult following. Uh, with sports fans in town that you know somehow my name gets mentioned they say oh man I loved you know Verlander on your show or you brought up this or you said something about a, a 30 for 30 and that that really excites me and uh, I want to keep that going because I felt we we've, we've built that it, it's taken a while and it's taken you know blood sweat tears or at times it's it's felt like blood sweat tears and I'd, I'd hate for that to disappear because I I enjoy communicating with my, my fellow citizens of Jacksonville, uh, what's going on in town, and uh, also the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. So we'll, we'll touch on uh, many things here with Miller on Sports. Uh, uh, we'll be presented by Snyder Air Conditioning, SnyderAC.com, uh, our sponsor since uh, day one. Uh, Snyder Air Conditioning, 6410600 here in the Jacksonville area. Of course, area code 904, SnyderAC.com, and you can find them on Facebook. We'll take a time out. Come on back. Thanks again for joining us. We'll, we'll get into some meat and potatoes. And for the most part, every week we'll go kind of 15 to 20 minutes. So if it's that drive to work, maybe you're working on a, a 5K, we'll, we'll run with you. I, I probably won't, but I'll, I'll be uh, in your ears. So stay with us. It is Miller on Sports in podcast format. Thanks again to listening to Miller on Sports here. Podcast format for the show. I'm your host, Richard Miller, also voice of the UNF Ospreys. Check out our broadcast, men's basketball on 1010 XL. Our first game Friday at South Carolina, 7 p.m. And I like Coach Driscoll has told me for about the last week or so, it's a special team. And 
uh, unique situation and I think could be a, a very special year uh, for North Florida and for men's basketball and the Ospreys. Uh, we look at the Jacksonville Jaguars from over the weekend, uh, heading to London for the week or so, uh, playing the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, they'll play more games in London, which like, clearly is, is good uh, for this organization. Monetarily wise, I think uh, b building more of a fan base, but anything as well that just keeps this team in Jacksonville, I'm pretty much all for. Uh, that's that's kind of my outlook, and uh, hopefully we can give uh, the UK folks a, a better product uh, than what happened Sunday uh, against Dallas. Because uh, you really look after the after the first quarter, and Jacksonville allowed so much to happen that Dallas, you know, not not the best team in the league. Uh, they've got a quarterback. Uh, they have uh, one, one of, if not the strongest, running back in the league right now. Good tight end uh, in elite but questionable character wide receiver in Des Bryant. So they have a lot of pieces, and they have a good offensive line that played well on Sunday. But for Jacksonville, when it's another year of, of one and nine, and we've seen this now for three straight seasons, uh, I know you've seen it. NFL record. It hasn't happened before three straight years uh, of starting one and nine through those first 10 games. But it, it's easy to harp on all the negatives. You know, it comes out Alan Hearns with the concussion, Alan Robinson with the stress, stress fracture. Uh, you saw earlier today uh, Dakota Watson uh, getting cut. Really no surprise there. If you look at his deal, not a lot of money loss, but no plays made. If if you go back and watch any of the TV broadcasts, I think for the most part, his name was really just mentioned on special teams, and that was about it. As a player that was assumed to maybe be a get-after-the-quarterback kind of role, just did not occur this year. Not a lot of money lost. Jaguars have plenty of cap space, so it's not a, a big, big issue, but another thing of, ah, Wish that could have worked out a little bit better, but that's the National Football League. And from Sunday, when it's Cowboys and Jaguars, and one of the first stats, at least for me, that pops out on the broadcast is Jacksonville starting 44 times, 44 starts by rookies, 44 most in the NFL through that game. I look at it as a bye week comes at a perfect time. Gives this whole team a break. Gives Gus Bradley time to rest, enjoy his family. Gives Blake Bortles time off. Because really since Indianapolis and probably even since being drafted, it's been go, go, go. No time to really rest. It's been learning the playbook, trying to understand everything. And no matter what, no matter where you're taken in the draft, first round, fifth round, as a quarterback, as any player, that you're going to have a difficult transition. It's a... Different scenery, different locker room, other players, things that you have to get used to. I, I would still say that all in all, because I've, I've seen a lot of it, uh, I've listened to plenty of Jaguars broadcasts, the coverage, all of that stuff, that last year to this year, it's an improved team, but no matter what we tell you, no matter what I say to you on a, on a podcast or uh, on a broadcast, that you know, losing is... It's not fun, and there's no way to get around that when you look at the record of, of one and nine, that, gosh, okay, it's getting better, but what's happening in that left column? It, under that W, has it improved? And last two years, it, it is not. But still in taking notes on this team, and you, know, you, you got that feeling early on that Dallas was, was going to take it to you. That with DeMarco Murray, he touched the ball the first four times. Uh, two, the first two were immediately for, for first downs. And then he broke that Chris Clemens hand tackle. You knew it was going to be a long day. And, and we knew going into this that if you could contain Murray, whether it was you know Tony Romo starting or anybody else, that, hey, you, know, you can maybe beat this team if you slowed down Murray. But that was not the case uh, on Sunday. And, and Jacksonville had a few opportunities there in that first quarter and some change. Tony Romo overthrowing Jason Witten on a, on a third and six. And I really thought on that, that Witten touchdown, 
Hey, it looked like Tyson Alalu was held, but JT Thomas was slipping and sliding and falling all about uh, for that touchdown to Jason Witten. Three things, though, in my notes, uh, just from watching it the first time and seeing that Blake Bortles is, is continuing to make these passes and, you know, just throws and maybe it's a check down or, or something good with the running back, that there are improvements from him. Yeah, you, I still think you're seeing growth where that, that first down pass to Cecil Shorts, that middle of the field pass. It, I, I remember when we we talk about Blaine Gabbert of, gosh, he'd have that maybe 20, 21-yard pass and it had zip and he was standing strong in the pocket. And we got excited about that. And when I was on another radio station that we would just almost break down that one pass and say, well, if you could have five or six more of those, the Jaguars would be in a better situation. Now, that if was bold, it was italicized, it was underlined, and it was in, in the color green. But with Bortles, it's, it's a different scenario. Third down completion to, to Allen Robinson early on in the game had some zip on it. it now, it's still going to be that issue of putting together 60 good minutes of football and maybe even 50 minutes of above average football. It's not going to be that consistent level that we want. You're going to see that from good teams, maybe like in Arizona. You see it from New England, from Denver. When you're a playoff caliber team, you put together consistent football, above average, very good, good football. And that's, that's what it comes down to. But the three positives I took away and just jotting down some things, Blake Bortles improved growth. He clearly has gotten better with understanding the offense, you know, understanding his team. He's still taking a lot of sacks and probably going to set a, in, an all-time NFL record for sacks uh, allowed in the season by, Jack, by Jacksonville, uh, which is unfortunate. But all of that, he's, he's, he had Allen Robinson. Sooner or later, he's going to get Mercedes Lewis back, which I feel like is going to be a, a big key for this offense. But... Denard Robinson, even though that, that fumble, that was just, oh, you got to be kidding me. That one drive where it was nine plays, 80 yards, and you, you really start to get, get going with that. That first quarter, 32-yard touchdown run by, by Denard, and I think it was that second cut. I think he planted the right foot, cut, and just had that burst. And I, I jumped off, off the couch and said, there it is. That, that's it. That is something you need, no matter how good your quarterback is, you need that as a weapon in your offense. And to see this offensive weapon turn into a more than capable running back has been such a delight. Now, you're going to see this with the 2013 draft that, you know, so far, Josh Evans kind of a, uh, they, they can in the offseason, I think, improve that position. Now, granted, still six games left in the 2014 season, but I'd say for the most part, he's playing like a, like a sixth-round draft pick last year, just from, from what we've seen. Jonathan Cyprian can get better. But Denard, being taken in the fifth round, 34 picks ahead of Josh Evans, he's, he's been looking like a very, very good player. But I'd say for every Denard Robinson you have, you have a Josh Evans. For every maybe, and I've, I've been pleased with him, uh, the third guy that was a, a good on my list of, of things that I saw Sunday where I said, gosh, uh, that's, that's nice. Defensively, I thought Demetrius McRae looked good. A uh, seventh-round pick in 2013, but here he is. He's, he's gotten, I think he's six starts on the year. If you look at his stats, he's, he's doubled his tackle totals. Now, could that be that guys are getting to the second, third level and he's having to stop them? Yeah, that's that's probably a, a good idea there but in pass coverage there was the uh, pass to Devin Street uh, that was offensive pass interference I thought he played the ball very well he just got pulled down by Street and then he was on Des Bryant the end zone in the first half not a great pass by Tony Romo but Demetrius McRae was there and, and from being in the locker room McRae you know long player He's got good hands, strong handshake, and just can bat down balls. And that was a play as well early in the second quarter, kind of before everything started to fall apart, at least 
that that was the feel you got falling apart for this Jaguars team when it was third and four. And Demetrius McRae batted down or batted away a pass from Terrence Williams. He, he's going to be in there. Now, granted, I think I saw Ryan O'Halloran say that he had three missed tackles. Uh, Jonathan Cyprian, unfortunately, led the team with four missed tackles. But I thought McRae was an, another positive in saying, here you have a seventh-round draft pick from last year, and he's doing these kind of things. He's coming in and, and giving you quality minutes and, and key plays and, and keeping your team in this. And... Again, for every Denar, there's maybe a Josh Evans who could be playing better. For Demetrius McRae, I thought he's played well, ha had some issues at times, but still, for, for being a late-round draft pick, in that 6th, 7th round range, you don't or, or should not expect quality playing time. But from McRae, we're seeing that. For McRae, you have an A. Sanders, which last week I, I discussed this, that here you have a player that missed four games, missed a good part of camp, some preseason. You get ready for the game, and, and being only in your second year, that, that's an important time. And I mentioned it, I'm trying to remember if it was maybe the Steelers game or, or early on, kind of that fifth, sixth, maybe seventh week, and it was a punt return where – he had space, I want to say maybe eight yards from the, the closest special teams defender. And it, it's, it's like he had the vision, but just danced ever so slightly. And that dancing, those one or two steps, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you whether it be a, a touchdown or an extra five yards or, or whatever. It's going to cost you enough. And I think that's where you see it from A. Sanders, just completely botching that punt late in the first quarter kind of turned things a little bit more for Dallas. They scored six plays later. Now, granted, Ace had that, I think, 24, 25-yard return early in the second quarter, but you, you just you can't have those opportunities of, hey, you could have done something, fair catch, not great field position, but we hold on to the football. When you cost your team a turnover as a punt or kick return man, your, your job is, is going to be in trouble. Your job's on the line. And I think what also kind of for me after watching Ace and just more of those question marks and, and how much longer is this is this going to go on because you know, I think in these next four to six weeks that it could turn into, hey, it's, it's cut down Tuesday. You saw it with Dakota Watson, Dave Caldwell say, hey, we just we can't keep doing this. Whether it's maybe somebody that moved up from the practice squad, a rookie, Anybody, hey, we, we, we have to get better. It's just not happening being the, the third straight year of one and nine. But after seeing Ace Sanders early on Sunday and then watching the Bears and the Packers and that game pretty much being over at like eight minutes into the second quarter, but seeing Chris Williams, I want to say it was fourth quarter against Green Bay, but here's somebody in his late 20s and signed off from the CFL, kind of practice squad, bounced around, uh, almost like a Cameron Wake down in Miami that overlooked and can do some things. But here he returned a punt against Green Bay. Now, granted, it was garbage time. The game was over. But you can find somebody that can return the football. And, and I want that for Jacksonville because, you know, we've seen it where weeks they might win on defense – Offense might be kind of tied or close, keeping them in the game, just limit turnovers or interceptions by Blake Bortles. But the special teams aspect can, can win it maybe a couple times late for this Jaguars team with six more games remaining. You know, the Colts are, are very good. They're going to win the AFC South. The New York Giants, they, they could not bring down Marshawn Lynch. They're, they're just a, a hot mess at least after Sunday, and you can just go to Tom Coughlin and uh, see him on the sidelines and create a meme, and that's that pretty much embodies the giant season this year. So for Jacksonville, you know, you go up against the Titans, Texans, there are some opportunities there, but it's a, it's a struggle. We'll try and point out the positives uh, with this podcast, Miller on Sports. Uh, I went a little bit over, but I, I guess that's fine. The first podcast will probably go for about 20 
25 minutes or so. It is Miller on Sports. We're on Facebook, Instagram, always presented by Snyder Air Conditioning, SnyderAC.com. Uh, like their Facebook page, but check out SnyderAC.com for your air conditioning needs. Uh, I'm somebody I, I need it a lot, maybe more often than most if maybe it's it's cool enough on a Sunday to where I open up the windows in the apartment. But also your heating needs, uh, whether it's those couple times uh, during the quote-unquote winter months, but if you need them for anything, air conditioning, heating, it is SnyderAC.com. They present Miller on Sports in the podcast. We'll come on back, kind of wrap things up, uh, put a bow on it, uh, talk about a few other things and, and what we'll be doing in the future uh, for this podcast. And again, it's kind of up to you. I mean, I'll, I'll talk and talk and talk, uh, but we can answer questions. Uh, just have some fun with it. We'll introduce more guests and uh, it, it'll be fun and just uh, keep up with us because uh, I enjoy it and I, I think you do as well. That should about do it for Miller on Sports, the first podcast, which hopefully we've got thousands more on deck. Who knows? The world will never know. It's kind of up to the listener, and it, it is up to me, but y'all make the ultimate decision uh, on how much we do this. And uh, again, find us Facebook, Twitter, Miller on Sports. We've got the YouTube channel. I'm on Instagram, which if you've noticed recently, it's pretty much just food uh, on Instagram. It's uh, I've realized that anybody can be a fantastic a photographer on Instagram, so that makes me feel pretty good. And uh, enjoyed Porch Fest uh, this past weekend uh, downtown, and it's just a fantastic event. Uh, like my dad said, that it should be once a month, if not more, because incredible music, and I feel like it highlights the Jacksonville area. So again, Instagram Miller on Sports, find us there. Uh, I'll probably be tweeting from the road and everything with UNF basketball. And uh, again, I appreciate that opportunity because. Uh, we kind of, it, it was a sad, but kind of in a way, a, a nice end to the Miller on Sports show on 1010 XL and just transition almost smoothly into the voice of the Ospreys uh, opportunity and position. And I tell you what, it's, it's something that when you're around sports, you get a different feel for uh, opinions or how the game is played or maybe the game day operations and, and that kind of stuff. But when, when you start traveling with the team, and, and I know that maybe beat writers or, or folks in TV that cover teams just nonstop, 26-7, uh, that you, you realize, man, it's, it's kind of a different game. And we realize more and more that these people are, are human beings. But the, I'm, I'm always fascinated with the stories that you get. That traveling with, with JU football in 2013, just for that one season, that you sit, you sit down with Kerwin Bell and you hear these stories of Florida football that you would never hear otherwise. You're eating meals with you know, the special teams coordinator or uh, the defensive coordinator, all these different coaches, and you get stories that you're like, wow, you know, I've, I've, I've seen stuff like that in maybe a 30 for 30 or, or a football life on NFL Network, but when you're actually sitting there and hearing it of, yeah, I tried to tackle so-and-so, but, you know, to... <laughs> no such avail. It, it was not the way I had kind of planned it. So that, that's really what I enjoy about being on the road. That Yeah, it is, it is tiring at times, but like any other job, you adapt to it. But the stories that you get to share with people, that's a neat thing. And I've, I've told folks a, a number of times, and they kind of give me a head nod and, and maybe a weird look that the, the three teams right now are sports entities in Jacksonville that you want to be around or, or see this growth here in maybe the next year or two. It's, it's of course, the Jaguars, but it's the Armada and UNF. They're, they're kind of 2A and 2B right there because, you know, what, what Mark Frisch is building there with the baseball grounds, but the players are putting together the, the top of the line organization, the front office. If you look at the North American Soccer League, they're building something for the not just foreseeable future, but for 10, 15 years down the road where making a push for Major League Soccer is, is definitely, definitely a possibility. And then I see UNF that in these next two seasons, this is, and it's just a fact of the matter that it's Atlantic Sun basketball, so you'll get compared to the Florida Gulf Coast. But when you're compared to Florida Gulf Coast, that immediately means that, hey, you won your conference and you made a pretty decent run and the NCAA tournament. And you can just look at their campus, their gym, their attendance, and what it does for a school. And that right now is what UNF is looking at. 
with these next couple years at the foundation they've put together, Matthew Driscoll going into his sixth year coaching as their head coach, the, the foundation is set. It is a kind of a younger group now, but you've got a great guard in Dallas Moore. You've got uh, Romello there, and there's so many pieces that have fit together so well in this puzzle. And to get on board with this team and to interview, I guess it was maybe three weeks ago, and offer the opportunity where it's one of those things where you, you look back on it and, you know, Lee Moon says, hey, we'd really love you to come on board and, and be the voice. And I said, well, you know, that's, that's great. I, I, I kind of need to think about it. Can I, can I come back to you on, on Monday or, or call you and, you know, just take some time alone, talk to Peggy and some family and see what they think? Of, of course, sitting there, I'm saying, well, you're going to take this. <laughs> Why would you not take this? You'd be a fool to pass up on this. Because talking to friends, they also realize the potential and the close, the near future of UNF. And especially, you know, you can talk about other aspects of the athletic program or the department. It's, it's like any other school. You know, you can highlight the you know, golf team or how is volleyball doing or, you know, is track and field strong, cross country. You can highlight the other aspects, the other teams, and, you know, they might be winning their conference tournament or making a push in regionals or whatever it might be. But the focus for that one university, it might be basketball or college football or, or something. And for UNF, it's, it's men's basketball where – the university and everybody in Jacksonville, if they're looking at the Ospreys, it's how is men's basketball doing? And I think in these next couple years, it's going to be, <laughs> they've done pretty well. And it'll be past tense and uh, there might be a, a ring or two or some, some nets cut down. This has been Miller on Sports. Again, Facebook, Twitter, all social media, that stuff, YouTube, Instagram. We appreciate it. The first show in the books. I don't know if I went over or under, but we'll, we'll find out uh, soon. We'll keep in that 15 to 20 minute range to start and then just kind of go from there. And my off days as voice of the Ospreys will come in studio. We'll record something. Uh, Jaguars uh, will be the most Jacksonville and Hopefully in this, I've seen it uh, kind of starting up, but I, I want to see more of a push uh, for local podcasts in Jacksonville and get this going, sports or otherwise, but talk about this great city that we live in and maybe, maybe get people to move here, but if they don't, that's fine because we're growing just, just all right, but we'll talk Jacksonville and more sports. It is Miller on sports.